Hey everybody, it's Ben Capozzi with Broad Shoulders Farm. It's uh, Saturday, September 12th, and I, uh, I just want to take a minute and talk a little bit about um, black locust, which is one of the trees that uh, I'm planning on using here at the farm uh, as part of our uh, bee-friendly uh, farming grant project that we're working on. And um, behind me is actually um, a little stand of, uh, there's a ton of uh, juvenile black locusts back there mixed in with the uh, stilt grass, not stilt grass, but um, stickweed. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about the plant in general and then talk specifically about a couple of the ways we're going to use it. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty neat tree, so I'll flip the camera around and, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, so black locust. Uh, Robinia pseudoacacia, if you're into the uh, scientific name, the genus and species and all that. Right here's one, it's, what is that, four and a half feet tall. Here's another one. Um, as you start to look around, there are a bunch more. There's one. Oh, there's a little seedling or sucker. There's a little one, there's a little one, there's a little one. There's a couple out in the field there that I've mowed around. Um, I know the black locust because I've, I've seen the tree before. Um, I'm fairly familiar with it. It's got these, uh, like, what do they call this, like compound leaves. Um, it, it, once you know that it's in like the pea family, Fabiaceae, um, you start to think about, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, you can also tell by the presence of thorns. Um, here are some little bitty bitty thorns, but uh, on the larger ones, the thorns look like... There you go. See the thorns right there. This um is different than uh, sorry, different than um, honey locust, which has like the thorns themselves have thorns. These thorns are, you know, maybe a half inch, quarter inch. Um, don't get much bigger than that. More kind of like a briar. Honey locust has like they look like a trident. I mean, they're like five or six inches long, and then they've got thorns on the thorns like uh oh uh the guy in the latest kylo ren in the latest star uh, star wars film he's got like you know his sword has extra swords on it but um anyhow so uh black locust i also know these are black locusts because there used to be a really big black locust tree here that fell down uh last winter and um and uh, i was hoping that it was going to stick around and would rot in place um, because it would take it a long time. Black locust is a very, very durable, very hard wood, which is unique um, in the, because it's such a fast growing tree. But I wanted to stick around because I thought it would be an awesome play area for the um, chickens. But uh, this is my father-in-law's uh, land and um, he hooked the thing up to his tractor with a chain and dragged it off around over to his wood processing area and it was gone like in just a few days. So. Uh, that didn't happen, but it left a ton of uh, either seedlings or suckers. Um, I can't quite tell which is which, but black locust does that uh, really well. And um, black locust is uh, native to uh, North America. It's native actually to uh, Appalachia. Um, despite that, it's considered an invasive species, even in some U.S. states, which is weird because it's a native plant. Um, and it's a really, really useful plant. And I'm not going to talk about all the uses right now, but... I just want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to use them for, which is uh, their nectar flow. Um, they produce gorgeous, gorgeous uh, white and pink kind of clusters. They look almost like grape clusters uh, of flowers in the late spring. Um, and they're a fantastic source of uh, sugar, uh, carbohydrates, and uh, proteins, so uh, nectar and pollen. Um, for bees and uh, I have heard it told, heard it said that um, honey made out of uh, black locust flowers or made with those produces is really exceptionally good honey. Um, I don't I don't have any sort of a beekeeping operation right now but uh, we did get a grant to do um, these plantings for uh, bee friendly farming and so uh, I definitely want to make use of this tree that is already here. So how am I going to make use of it? Well, the good thing is, is that the plant is tough as nails. Um, and so I'm actually going to be digging up these um, suckers, these saplings, these seedlings, and transplanting them 
uh, all around the different places around the farm where I'm trying to get other plants to grow because um, you can use black locust as a, a mulch plant, if you will. Um, and uh, indigenous wisdom uh, knows a lot about this um, permaculture community, um, which is reliant on a bunch of uh, indigenous wisdom, uh, certainly talks and makes use of this. They call it chop and drop. And you can do it with lots of plants, but uh, I'm going to be doing it here with these black locusts. But essentially, as the tree gets to a certain size, you um, you prune it selectively. You can uh, prune it to a, a central leader. You can uh, prune it down at the base, coppice it, and let it um, sprout up. Again, with multiple branches, you can pollard it, which is you get kind of a central trunk going up and then you cut it at the top up here and it produces a flush of growth uh, up at uh, above browse height or wherever you want it. Um, different, uh, what is it, ungulates? Hoofed animals? Is that like goats? I think goats and sheep can eat it. Um, I think it's toxic to cattle, but be that as it may, this tree can kind of take a pounding and so you can cut from it many, many times and just feed those cuttings uh, right back to the plant itself or carry it around the farm and use as mulch anywhere that you need mulch um, and it breaks down very quickly um, which is really nice this this fresh growth um, this stuff breaks down really quickly the uh, a more established black locust um, tree uh, would um, produce really excellent pole wood or even um, uh, lumber uh, boards for lumber um, which would be really really uh, high in demand because Black locust is incredibly rot resistant. Um, uh, it's, it's really kind of crazy for such a fast growing plant. Um, I planted uh, some seedlings that I got from either the Virginia or the Maryland nursery uh, at our house in town a couple years ago in order to provide a dappled shade for uh, some pawpaw trees that I was growing. And um, that seedling was, I don't know, 18 inches tall when I first got it and it's about three and a half, four years later, four years later now. Um, I don't have a picture of it, but that tree is 20 feet tall now, like easily. Um, you know, it's it's thin, but it is fast, fast growing. Um, you could definitely get a, a really nice couple of fence posts out of that tree now. But um, the reason I want the black locust is because of, number one, the flowers that will be great pollen and nectar for the bees, native bees, honeybees, bumblebees, uh, all the native uh, pollinators that are after um, those carbs and protein here at the farm. But as I've talked about uh, when I talk about the project here in general, one of the things that I'm trying to do is make everything multi-purpose. So I don't want to have just one thing, one element, one plant that does just one thing. So for instance, the apple trees way off in the distance. Um, they provide shade for the chickens uh, to hang out in. They provide feed for the chickens to hang out in. They provide apples for me that I can make various different products from, from cider to uh, vinegar, um, to dried apples, to apples for muffins that I might make or sell at the farmer's market or pies or anything like that. So the apple tree has at least three things that I can think of that make it useful. So in just the same way, the black locust needs to be useful to me in more than one way. And fortunately it is, so I can get the bee forage from it, I can get mulch from it, and um, eventually I can get either pole wood or uh, boards from it. And uh, if I don't like it, if it doesn't work out, or if it's in a place where I'm kind of done using it, I can just cut it down and be done with it. Um, they do like to sucker, obviously, and the more you um, prune them, the more they'll want to put up these suckers. But as long as you have a plan to manage it, a plan to either come through with a brush hog periodically um, or dig them up and transplant them elsewhere. Um, if they fit in your farming context, then I think it's a really great plant to work with and I think they're a really good fit for me. Um, so I'll hopefully talk more about black locust um, as the project moves along and as the farm continues to grow. But um, see, there's a whole bunch here at the base of these trees. Um, this is a black walnut, but this is a black locust. Um, probably sister to the one that was here that fell. But you can see down here, just at the base, there's a bunch of these. And uh, I'm going to dig these little devils up here over um, this fall and transplant them all around. Um, and just like for instance, por ejemplo, 
one way that I can use them is to set them up around the perimeter and, uh, and let them grow. And as they get to a decent size, I can chop and drop, I can cut them up, and I can use them to feed other plants. So I'm trying to get a nice row of uh, persimmons and chestnuts going along here at the north uh, end of the orchard. And so they can be used for that. Um, I just think that they're going to provide a couple things for me uh, that I need here at the farm. And I think they're a great tree to work with, so long as you know what you're getting into and you have a plan to manage it. Um, just one more bonus thing, as you can see, that one was there in a big stand or a collection of squirrel planted um, black walnut trees. Black locust has no problem dealing with uh, the juglone, um, the uh, allelopathic chemical that uh, every part of the black walnut tree secretes that really inhibits the growth of a lot of different plants, but black locust is one of the ones that has no problem dealing with that. So if you're working with black walnuts and you need um, a tree for either firewood or bee forage or pole wood or mulch, you might want to think about using black locust. So um, I'll talk more about how I'm using this uh, around the farm as the project advances, but I just wanted to kind of do an initial one of these, plant my flag and um, put this tree on your radar if uh, it's not already. Um, a really good source of information on this tree is um, uh, Sean and Sasha at uh, Edible Acres. Uh, I think their website is edibleacres.org. They're a nursery in uh, upstate uh, New York in the Finger Lakes region, um, and they have a just an absolutely wonderful YouTube channel um, that I, I consult many, many times. Sometimes same videos over and over again, but Sean talks a lot about working with black locusts. So uh, if you think this might be a tree for you, uh, I encourage you to check it out. And uh, if you already are working with it, um, maybe post something in the comments and let me know. Um, or if you have questions, comments, concerns, um, also feel free to uh, give me a shout out. Let me know what's going on. But as this project develops, my hope is that around the entire perimeter of the orchard, there will be a line of black locust trees that um, I will be managing in a couple different ways to either get pole wood, uh, firewood, um, bee forage, or mulch. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this one for today. Whatever you are up to, I hope you're having a great day. Um, stay safe, and uh, I will catch you later. Uh, you can follow at Broad Shoulders Farm uh, here on YouTube, on Instagram, and Facebook. Bye-bye.